Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi to make a media center that looks like a tiny arcade. Ever since I first started making projects with the Raspberry Pi, people have been asking me to use it to make a media center. And that's basically just a little machine that lets you watch videos, listen to music, look at pictures on your TV. Now it turns out that setting one of those up is extremely simple, but before I show you how to do that, let's figure out what we're gonna need. You can buy all these components individually, but I like to buy these kits because they have a Raspberry Pi, a memory card, and a power supply in them. The only other thing that you have to have is an HDMI cable that plugs right in here and goes to your TV. You also need a way to control the Raspberry Pi and give it input. It's got USB ports here, so you can plug in a USB keyboard and mouse if you want to, but I decided to get a wireless keypad. This has got a full keyboard, a touchpad, and some buttons that are assigned to home and mute and things like that. This works with the little USB dongle that comes with it that you just plug right into the Pi and you're ready to go. One of the coolest things about getting that kit is it comes with a getting started guide, which on page eight shows you the one button that you have to click to set up the media center. It's literally that easy. And once it installs and restarts, you have a working media center. There's a couple of different ones on here to choose from, but they're all based on Kodi, which is a really popular open source media center software. That's basically it. You have everything you need right there to get a functional media center, but you have a bunch of components and you have no storage. If you actually wanna store videos and photos and music on the media center to play back, then you need to add some storage to the Pi. There's a lot of different ways to add that storage. You could connect to a network storage device or you could add it via USB, which is what I'm gonna do with this SSD drive. This video is sponsored by Kingston. They sent me this SSD drive in an upgrade kit and it comes with some really cool accessories. If you wanna add the SSD to an existing PC, it comes with a metal tray that you can slide right in. Or if you want it to be an external drive, it actually comes with a really nice USB enclosure. You just slide the SSD in here and then it has a USB port right there so you can plug it into any device. It also comes with all the cables you need to use both of those things. But in my case, I'm gonna be putting all these electronics into a little case, so I bought a USB to SATA cable to hook them up. Now take note of this, if you add more than one of these, you're probably gonna to have to run them through a powered USB hub to make sure that they have enough power to run, but in this case, one of them works fine off the power source to the Pi. Okay, that's all the electronics, let's put it in a really cool container. I scaled down and printed out the template for my full-size arcade machine and then used some spray adhesive to attach two pieces of MDF and the template to one of them. I trimmed off the outside edge to line it up with the edge of the wood and then used the bandsaw to cut out all the other shapes. As long as you don't use too much of the adhesive, you can peel the template right off and separate the pieces very easily. I cut down several more pieces of this quarter-inch MDF to act as the core of the machine. I did them one piece at a time, setting them in place and then tracing out where they went this helped me figure out where the overlaps were between the pieces, and then I could go back and measure and cut the pieces to fit exactly. I didn't really plan or measure any of these pieces, I just did them one at a time in order. I marked one, cut it, fit it in place, and then moved on to the next piece to do the same thing. Most of these were square cuts, but once I got up towards the top of the machine, things started to have bevels. I used the belt sander to kind of roughly get the bevels that I needed, and then just adjusted it to make them fit. There was a fair amount of trial and error on getting these angles right, but ultimately it doesn't really matter what the angles are. If the angles don't match up on the inside of the machine, you won't ever see it. What's really important is that they match up on the outside. In some of these cases, that's much easier to do. Some of them you have to be a little more exact. But eventually I had all the pieces cut and set in place, and then it was time to start gluing everything up. I could have used wood glue here, but it would have taken longer to dry, and since this isn't load bearing at all, I decided to use CA glue for everything. It dries in just a few seconds, so it was very quick to set these panels in place and just hold them in place until they dried. This made it really easy to build up the shape for this very quickly. I glued almost all of the pieces up to one side panel, except for the piece that was supposed to be the screen. Before it was fixed in place, I wanted to cut out an area in the middle. I planned on doing this with my scroll saw, which is a tool I've never actually used before. I drew in the same distance from all four sides and then drilled a few holes. I fed the blade through one of the holes and then cut out the middle section of the wood and did a very poor job of it. I tried to clean it up with my Dremel, but eventually just went to the CNC and cut out a square. Obviously, if you don't have a CNC, use a scroll saw, but I do, so I wanted to take advantage of it. I still had to clean up this cut a little bit just with some sandpaper, but then when I held them up next to each other, it was obvious which one I needed to use. After I got this cut down to size and glued in place, it was finally ready to start working on the inside of the box. I cut down several small pieces of MDF in different sizes. These weren't measured or planned, again, but I just made different size pieces that I could use to hold the components in place. I sanded these smooth and then started placing them on the inside of the machine. 
Mainly, I wanted the Raspberry Pi and the drive to be held in place, but not up against a wall, and not up against the bottom. The Raspberry Pi has the memory card coming out of the bottom, and I didn't want to have undue pressure on it. I made some small pieces to stand it off from the wall, and then add some other small pieces to kind of hold it in place. It slides very easily into these grooves, and once it's in there, it's nice and tight and doesn't fall out. With those pieces in place, I knew the components were good, so I went ahead and glued on the other outside panel. I made sure all of the panels lined up with the outside edges, but then essentially the construction was done. I used some wood filler to fill in any gaps in between the panels, and just to smooth over some of the joints between the different pieces of wood. This stuff was all kind of cut one piece at a time, so nothing is perfectly measured, nothing is perfectly lined up, and wood filler is a pretty good way around that in this case. I sanded everything with an orbital sander on low speed so I didn't take off too much material, and then used a sanding block to finish it up. MDF soaks up paint like crazy, so before I went to paint, I did several coats of primer. The first coat seals it, but it also raises the surface a little bit, so you definitely need to give a good sand here before adding a second coat, and possibly even a third. I only did two, and it ended up to be a nice smooth finish. After that, I just used some gloss black spray paint and covered the whole thing with two or three coats. To make the screen, I used some really thin plexiglass that I would gotten from Home Depot a long time ago and just cut out a little rectangle. I rubbed it on some sandpaper on both sides and that gave it a nice frosted look since I didn't really want you to be able to see through it and it wasn't going to have anything behind it. To hold this in place, I just used some CA glue. The last piece to be cut was the back panel, and I want this to be able to come in and out, not be permanently attached. I put in the components, and then set the piece in place, making sure that there was enough room for the wires to come out and for some ventilation. Once I knew it was fit, I painted it off camera, just like I had done the rest of the case. For the graphics, I shrunk down and printed out the graphics that I used for my full-size arcade machine on just some glossy photo paper. I cut these out with an X-Acto knife and then added some spray adhesive to the back side. I laid it in place, lining up the front edge, because that's where most of the detail of the shape is. I didn't make my initial cuts for the side panels perfectly along the template, so I had a little bit of a difference between shape of my side panels and my graphics. I just trimmed off the excess with an X-Acto knife right up to the edge of the wood. I did the other side the same way and then ran over all the edges of the cut white paper with a black sharpie. I didn't cover any of the graphics, just the exposed white paper, and it totally blended in. I also cut down a marquee and stuck it on the front. The entire cabinet got covered with several coats of spray lacquer, and this helps protect the print and the paint. The last little thing to add is an LED and a resistor that just connect to the ground and the 5 volt on the Pi. This will go behind the screen on the little arcade machine so that we have a nice soft glow when the Pi is turned on. I slid all of the components in and hooked everything up. I had to adjust the USB wire a bit and the LED wire just to get everything placed correctly, but then I added HDMI and power and slid on the back panel. And there it is, a tiny Raspberry Pi Media Center. Let's try it out. This little wireless controller works great and you can easily get to all the media that's on the local SSD drive or you can hook up network attached storage if you want to. There's even apps that you can install to run YouTube and Twitch and all sorts of online services. There you go, it's very easy to get a Raspberry Pi set up as a media center, and you can put it in any kind of enclosure that you want. I didn't put a fan on this one because you don't actually have to have a fan on a Raspberry Pi, but you still don't want to close it up completely. You want air to be able to pass by it so that it doesn't overheat. If you want to make your own, I'll have links down in the description for everything that I used, including the SSD from Kingston, so go down there and check it out. This is a pretty cheap way to get a fully customized media center. If you want to see some other Raspberry Pi projects, I've got a few more that you can check out, and a whole bunch of other types of stuff. Don't forget to subscribe so you can check out all of the upcoming projects, and I have a second channel that you might be interested in, which is non-project related stuff. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.